Hi, everybody. I am Katina McHenry. Thank you so much for joining us this month on our Q&A with Lil. Welcome to the April Q&A, Lil. It's every month. I'm so happy to see your face. So good to see you, Katina. I love doing these chats with you. Well, I think our, our faculty, staff, and now our students appreciate hearing from you on a regular basis. So as you know, we are now sending this, these to students and uh, the feedback has been really great. Awesome. So we, this month, will be talking about several different topics. One, the Dean's Advice, Advisory Council, which we just, you just attended that. So we'll talk about updates from there. We're also talking about commencement plans for this May. Uh, we are talking about summer programs and what that will look like this summer. We'll talk a little bit about the importance of getting vaccinated, which UT and UC Health has been really robust in, uh, in getting our community vaccinated. And then the last thing we'll talk about is our fall reopening plans and what that looks like. So let's first talk about the advisory council and, and how that advisory council meeting went this, this month, Lil. Gosh, it was great. I feel so lucky to have so many prominent alums who are CEOs and CFOs and managing directors, all helping, helping the school. And you might ask, what do these advisors do? Well, first, we do like to use them for advice. And one of the things we teed up during the social hour is who should they be introducing to the dean and to the school both in terms of all the big new companies that are moving here and senior executives who are choosing to reside now in Texas instead of New York and California, we want those introductions and that's a big help. The other thing the advisors do is they like to gather this year virtually to learn from us and from each other. And we featured a fireside chat about energy with uh, two of our advisors, Marcy Zlotnick and Jerry Thompson, who have experience owning retail energy companies. And they were talking about the deep freeze that we had in Texas and what the state of Texas could do differently. And then our chairman, John Harkey, interviewed Ethan Burris and two of our, um, two of our friends of Macomb's an alum, uh, Ellen Black, and a friend, Jason Ballard, who are hugely successful entrepreneurs. And so the whole theme was how much entrepreneurship touches everyone at McCombs. And then Michael Clement interviewed Coach Sarkeesian, Mr. All Gas, No Breaks, about <laughs> not just football, but also leadership. So it was really a great meeting. It was so good to see uh, more than a hundred of our friends of Macomb's in attendance. That's fantastic. And nice to have some celebrity guests in, in attendance as well. Well, summer uh, is coming up. Before we get to summer, commencement is, I think, on top of many people's minds this year as we prepare to usher off a new class uh, into the world. Commencement will look a little bit different this year. We'll still have some virtual aspects, but there will also be an in-person element to commencement. So talk a little bit about what commencement will look like this year. Obviously, we're still in a pandemic. We're trying to stay as safe as we possibly can. Well, the University of Texas at Austin, unlike most schools around the country, are having at least one uh, fully in-person event, and it's the college or the university-wide ceremony at DKR Stadium. And I look forward to representing the Macomb School there with the entire campus community. At the college and program level, normally we would have in-person events with individual name reading, in-person speeches, handshakes, the whole works. We're unable to do that this year, but we're doing two separate types of things. First, we're having what we're calling magic moments or uh, special moments for name reading, video, photo capture, and senior associate dean Eric Hurst and I are completely happy to devote the full three days of May 20th, 21st, and 22nd to covering all of those uh, groups and programs so that you can have a photo with your family if you want as part of those magic moments. And then each program is putting together its virtual ceremony with commencement speakers, et cetera. And the BBA speaker is 2007 alum, 
Erin Patton. She is a successful entrepreneur. For MPA, it's Southwest Airlines CFO Tammy Romo, who had her BBA in 1984. And for the all the MBA programs, we have Plan to Honors 1976 grad Connie Duckworth, who's the founder and CEO of Arzu Studio Hope. So we hope you're going to participate in some or all of those things. I, I wish it were the normal we had two years ago, but I still think we're doing as much as we possibly can. Uh, and we want to include you uh, as, as you're able. Absolutely. And of course, nothing will take away from the huge accomplishment that graduation is, the uh, symbolism around graduation. And so it is an exciting time to at least celebrate the accomplishment and accomplishing just finishing school in a pandemic in the setting that we've been in for the last year and a few months. Right, and Katina, when you graduate, we're not saying goodbye to you. We want you to be part of this entire ecosystem that you come here for school and you stay connected through your whole life. So the career management operation now has uh, a newly stood up alumni career management function. And our executive education group has any number of short courses and certificate programs culminating when you retire, you might come back for a Tower Fellows program, which is kind of like a come back to campus camp uh, when you're uh, established and want to meet uh, other people at that stage of life and you get behind the scenes looks at everything around UT. So stay involved, come back and visit. Yes, we love that. Now let's talk about summer. What our summer, a two, a 2000, what year are we in? <laughs> it I seems know, like it all just merges together. <laughs> the summer. Uh, summer 21, what our yeah. summer programs will look like and, and what we're offering different that we haven't in the past. Obviously, there'll still, still be some virtual elements there as well. Yes. So of our summer scheduled classes, about 20% of them are hybrid the way you've had many of your classes this spring and fall, 80% uh, are fully online. One of the things UT's been emphasizing this summer um, across campus is to try to put a few more required courses fully online so that if you were out of town doing a summer internship, you might still be able to catch a course here or two that you needed. I think that's an enhancement. I, as you know, our MS and our MBA programs start a little sooner than the undergraduates. We're still waiting to see if we can be fully back at normal densities. Uh, and I'll just say the faculty remain eager to see students. Um, and so we're waiting for further guidance about that. Yeah. So that leads us to talk about the effort that UT has made uh, with UT Health to um, get vaccinations and also get as many people in the community within uh, UT, within McCombs and within the Austin community vaccinated. So can you talk a little bit about uh, just vaccination, how important that is and, um, and what we all need to do to get back to a safe space and being together? Well, I'll start by saying I am good to go. I have had both my Pfizer shots and my comfort level being out in the world is just so much higher as a result. And so I encourage all our faculty, staff and students to get vaccinated. Uh, the, there are, it's available for everyone over age 16. So that should include our ent entire student population. And we faculty really want to be back to normal in the fall where we can have a full classroom of eager students. But health and safety remain paramount. So UT is still working through its guidance about what does it look like in the fall. And I think it's going to depend heavily on having a high rate of community vaccination or immunity. And so, gosh, anything I can do to encourage you we have supply and we have enough appointments that you could get both your shots before the end of the semester. And as th you're thinking of returning 
to parents and grandparents in your hometowns, gosh, wouldn't it be great if you were fully vaccinated and uh, could return home uh, feeling like you were keeping them safe too? So mm -hmm. I, I encourage you to uh, take advantage of the availability of both vaccine and appointments. Yeah, I have to tell you, I was a little reluctant and I kind of held out for a little while, but I got my first shot recently. I go for my second shot in a couple of weeks and I got it through UT Health. And I have to tell you, the process was so seamless and just incredible. I was in line and I actually I got in before my appointment time. Once I got in, the line moved quickly. Once I got in, it was just a well-oiled machine. So the process has been was wonderful, was so seamless. And, and um, I just am grateful to all those who put the whole plan together. It, it's just, it worked very well. So. And Katina, we're going to keep the hand sanitizer around. And so <laughs> I just can't wait for a hug and a handshake from you. And I so know. <laughs> I miss. That's yeah, the one thing I miss. <laughs> Even though I've, I've seen people in person, it's like, I can't hug you. I, I can only do the right. elbow bump. So right, it'll right, be nice right. to hug people again. <laughs> Yeah, And that leads us to our last topic is talking about fall reopening. There is the, uh, a plan um, and an intention to open in the fall. And so let's talk about what that looks like for us. Well, here I'm going to hedge a little bit, Katinya. I think President Hartzell is planning to give us a little more guidelines about how to think about it, maybe yet this week. Uh, one of the things that... Um, Senior Associate Dean for Business Affairs, Caitlin Mullaney, and I and uh, Senior Associate Dean Eric Hurst are all talking about is that we want there to be optimal unit level decisions. So you might imagine that staff who are student facing, we might need a few more people on campus regularly than in units where the work really could all uh, continue remote. And we just want to figure out what is the best practice to support students and faculty and staff operations and then plan accordingly. But I do think given the nimbleness of our pivot to fully remote work about a year ago, that we're going to maintain a, an open mind to arguments about what's the best practice in your unit because I'm very aware that commuting is difficult when we're back at normal traffic patterns. And um, I, I want what works out the best for the entire college and its constituents. Right, and what's the safest thing to do? And what's safe, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lil. That about concludes it for our April q and I think we covered all the topics. So thank you for making the time and thank you faculty, staff and students for watching and listening to our April Q&A. We will see you next time. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks.